Hi everyone, you're welcome back to another episode of the Country Chat podcast with myself, Sandra Ganley. I hope everybody is keeping well. I'm very excited for today's interview because I have two people in front of me, not one. Usually I only have one person, but today I have two people in front of me. Um, I, I should have six, but we just, we couldn't work six. I, I'd be all over the place if I had six lads here in front of me. So I have two members of the Tumbling Paddies band in front of me. I have Gareth and I have Martin. Lads, how's things? Not too bad, Sandra. How are you? I'm all good. Thank you so much for popping on. As I said, well, you're the first band that's been on the podcast, so that's very exciting. And um, the first time I've had two people in front of me. So we'll just, we'll go with the flow and see what happens. So we want to give a shout out, of course, to the other lads in the band. Gareth, give them a mention there. We can't forget them. That's uh, Kieran Owens, Lee Jones, John McCann and Ashton McManus. They'll all be listening to us, please God. They, they have I mean, a day off today. You're the two that were roped into it, isn't that right? I, they, they get it handy. Yeah. <laughs> they do, so they'll be tuned in. So, lads, hello to you all. Uh, of course, I've met you all. I was lucky enough to meet you back during the summer. Um, we were lucky enough to actually have a gig last summer. Um, that was a great night, Martin, wasn't it? We'd done the All Things Country live and on stage. Yeah, it was great. Um, it was... I suppose the first time in a long time that we actually done a gig for that so it was great to see everyone even just see the production behind it and yourself and meet everyone um it was great just to get playing even with the band again it was great to get playing with them and um, i hope the audience all enjoyed it oh it was brilliant yeah it went out live on facebook um and it was where did, oh it was in edernie we, we filmed it so it actually wasn't edernie, too far yeah. away it wasn't too far away because you're all you're all based in Fermanagh, isn't that right yeah, it was only half an hour drive for us, really. Um, in Edwin, it suited us really well. So it is, and um, it was actually a great venue to have it. Yeah, lucky I had a, I had about three hours to go, so uh, <laughs> you had it handy. But yeah, it was actually recorded in well, for want of a better word, a barn, wasn't it, Gareth? Oh, it was. It was a tour shed, I think it was. <laughs> but, uh, it was a good, good job, man. It's definitely done the job. It's done the job all right. So that was last, I think, July we we done that. And then since then, you actually, you actually did a gig last week, am I right? Or the week before in the Ardone, Gareth? We did. We done a live stream from the Ardone Theatre on Enniskillen. Another great spot we often play it whenever. We usually play it to a packed audience, so it's a bit strange to go there with no one in front of us. But the times it's in it, it's, it's good to get playing any time at all, you know. Mm-hmm, absolutely so you had that and you were also I tell you it's been a kind of a busy 2021 for you you were also on the Today Show with Dahi and Maura how did that go? That was a good one now that was a good crack uh, we done that live from my garage out there it was uh, the sticks were just right beside the camera another <laughs> tour shed was it? It was another tour shed is right we're getting fun of playing in the tour shed so. but uh, yeah I was definitely on really get playing on it and chatting them good crack now good so you have been busy so that's great so I suppose geez, we're, we're cutting ahead now with all your recent gigs but I suppose going back to how the band actually formed um I I I don't even know do I know this even though I probably asked you last summer but obviously you were all trad musicians um first and as, and I of course I I'm involved in the trad scene as well so that's one reason I love you because you've the trad element going and the country music element but did you all know each other from school or or how how did you get together? How did it all start? Um, Martin, do you want to tell us a bit there? Um, yeah, I suppose it started, um, we all would have played in different um, sessions and that and locally in Fermanagh. Um, and then, so as we went from that, we, there was people asking us to do like pre-drinks weddings and that sort of thing. So we had a couple of gigs like that, but we were playing away and with no name or nothing. And then um, we were asked to support yoga in the Ardo one that Gareth mentioned there. So we done that under the band name Kjolmar. Kjolmar only ever done one gig because he earned Tumble the Car on the way to that gig. So we were renamed after that the Tumble and Paddies and that's kind of stuck since. Okay, and how bad was this Tumble? Was it? Ah, uh-huh, he was grand. He was, the Car wasn't good, but he was the best. <laughs> okay, okay. So it turned out all right. So that's where uh, it came from. That's good. There's a bit of a backstory to it. And I'd say, like, I absolutely love yoga. So I'd say that was a big, big gig he like um to, to work with yeah. yoga yeah it was really good like they were in there to want the full audience and it was our first experience of playing to that size of an audience and um like we were this is back maybe six years ago yeah like we were all very young at the time so it was really a good experience to do it that time so it was 
want to say you were probably only babies then because what what's the age group there i think early 20s is that right gareth uh, i think uh, the youngest is 20 and then the eldest uh, marty's getting on now he'd be 20 oh, <laughs> oh god can't say that can't say that live <laughs> close to the 30 and 20 <laughs> Is Marty the boss? So Marty's the the, the he's the top dog. He's the top dog. No. <laughs> um, and what else was the? Oh, I was going to say, Gareth. Did any of you ever compete against each other in the flat? Or I know you all obviously play different instruments, but did any of you end up competing against each other? No, I don't actually think we were ever up against each other. Um, no. There was no controversy there, like. There was no, no. no there was never anything because we're all on different instruments. And, you know, there was never anything like that. The flat. We all just kind of. We'd all be in the one age group, again, I usually, but no, there was never, I don't think we were ever in the same competition. And that's why the band works well together. Works well, yeah. <laughs> so that's how you got the name. So geez, yeah, you were only in your teen years. You were probably still in school when you'd done the yoga. And then, um, okay, so you were the tumbling paddies then. And how did you end up pushing it that bit further then? I know Andy got in touch with you and it kind of kicked off a bit more then. Is that right, Gareth? Yeah, we were kind of tipping about doing, like what Marty said, weddings and, you know, the, the free drinks at weddings. We are kind of going all right. We bought, a, we bought a sound system and then we got a gig in the pub down the road from me and Daryl Lynn and uh, we still done it. And uh, it was starting to kind of, uh, kind of progressing to maybe from one gig a month to two and then three, you know, it wasn't mad busy, but so we thought we were flat out. And then... Um, as it got on, kind of more people started to come to us and you know yourself, the way things build up and then Andy got involved then, then we actually recorded our first single because we, no, we had no actual songs out at this stage. So then we recorded the first single and then um, it just uphill kind of from there, you know. A pretty Girl, am I, was that, that was the first song? No, it was actually a song called A Yes, which was, that was grand, it, it done grand. And then we done our second song was The Lakes of Punch a Train because we always... We always done it live and it all seemed to go down well. So we said we'd do it next. And then Pretty Girl was the third one. I think Pretty Girl is probably the one that most people would know. I think that's why I said it. I, I love it. I think I love it even more though, just because it has that mix of trad and country, which for me is the best thing ever. Um, And all them songs are on your EP. Which that, that was brought out last year, was it, or the year before? Yeah, last January. The t- was it last year? Yeah, just, just before January. the last day. Yeah, it was just January 24th. Very good. So that's kind of kept you going all last year. You had the few songs and the EP and the mm. few gigs um, that we done. And then, now I've heard a little birdie tells me there's an album on the way. Oh, no, we don't own it. Uh, Maybe. We can't say now. too much. Yeah. But can't you, say much now. We can't say, don't want to say too much, but there might be an album on the way. You, you can't be just sitting there idle. We're hoping that there might be another song or two on the way. Ah, uh, there might be. I'll have to see. We'll yeah, or as I just say, you're sitting at home practicing. practicing. Martin, you play the accordion, isn't it? I play the accordion, yeah. yeah. yeah so, so you're sitting at I'm home practicing um, Sally Garden and Clifford's Le- and all that. Learning, learning all new stuff, yeah. We just need a dancer, Sandra. Well, now, you know, I'm always ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> was, it your, was it your gig I was made dance at? No. Oh, could I, be. Did you? Da- I think you you made a dance in Edinburgh that day, did you? What did I? I, I can't remember. Your gig or was it a different gig? Was I? I I I, I can't remember. Did, did I? I'm not sure. I think you did. I got up and done like um a eight or sixteen bars of a. Did I? Was it your? I think it was Barry Karen's, Was it? Oh, it was because Barry dances as well. I was going to say, because yeah, I was thinking, I, I done uh, 16 and someone else done 16. And I was like, I don't think any of you that da- I couldn't remember no. any of you dancers. Oh, there are dance. Oh, John. We danced with a drink in a step. <laughs> are any of you dancers, Irish dancers? Or Sh- did any of you do Shandles no. or am I raving? No, Marty no. there's a good jave or so yes. I am. <laughs> But, but you're as well say you are because if you say you're not then that's more <laughs> ammo for me to teach you so <laughs> it's easier then, just to say yeah I'm oh, a great Lord. dancer it could be more than spent <laughs> yeah, have you I seen no boots Sandra <laughs> <laughs> that's the best thing on the interviews to say you know how to dance and then I won't come near you 
um yeah so that was oh sugar oh yes we had mentioned the album and you're all at home practicing oh. your practicing maggie in the woods and all that stuff. <laughs> um very good so yes that was so that's kind of where you are up to now. You're working away behind the scenes on new bits and bobs. I know Andy writes a lot of songs for you as well. Yeah, Andy, I suppose, since Andy, we never sort of wrote our own music until Andy came along and he would have pushed us to write music more so than just recording a cover. Um, I suppose that's the biggest reason why we've only got the one rec- cover, um, The Lakes of Poncho Train. So Andy, we're all the time writing. Like, there's a load of songs out there that we would think is rubbish, we don't record them, but then we could go to them three months down the line and could record them or something, you know. Um, so from that, we're just writing and writing and the like Gandhi is writing there for everyone. He's, he must have wrote songs for half the country artists in Ireland at this stage, but um, it's just great. I suppose it's great to be involved with him because he's only on the end of the phone like for a song. Like, and he's, um, he's great knowledge of writing songs and that sort of thing. Yeah, he had said that to me on the phone, all right, that he had, God, he said he didn't know how many songs he had been writing. So it's great now that you have that library there to kind of work with and pick and choose from, which is brilliant. Um, So, yeah, you've been working away at that as well. And um, so that's the song side of things. Um, So, yeah, it's been it's been quiet, but it's been good. Well, it actually hasn't been that quiet for you because you have had them few gigs there at all, um, or RT, that kind of thing. Um. And what else was I going to? Oh, do you know what we'll do now? We'll, we, you're settled now in the podcast. I think it's time for the quick fire round. Yeah, Indeed. you're well settled now. So you, I have you nice and relaxed. And now I'm going to put the pressure right back on. So here Ooh. is the quick fire round with Gareth and Martin out of the tumbling paddy. So lads, when I ask you the question, it's kind of a one or two answer, one or two word answer, short and sweet. And Gareth, you're going to answer first and then Martin, just so I don't have the two E in my ear. I tell you, I've begun deaf if I have the two E. So <laughs> Gareth will go first and then Martin. OK, so I'm going to change it up a bit now because I know we have the trad and the countryside going. So we'll we'll see what happens. OK, so quick fire round. Who is your favourite American country music singer? Luke Combs. Martin? Uh, Brad Paisley. Okay. What is your favourite country music song to sing? Oh, um, uh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, Martin uh, has the benefit here because he's a bit longer to think about it. <laughs> I haven't thought of it. I have it. Martin, go you that's a great song. song. Uh, uh, probably Three Wooden Crosses, Randy Travis. Okay, Gareth, have you picked yours? Tennessee Whiskey is a great song. Oh, very good. Okay. Uh, what is your favourite Irish trad band? Um, I suppose we, we supported them, so I'd have to say Bioga. <laughs> um, I would say probably Cheda I've been listening to a right bit this last while. Um, and Gotcha. Yes, very good. I actually thought you were going to say Can, Gareth, because of the um, whistle and Brian Finnegan. Oh, yeah, no. No. Bro, go all the way. Bro, go all the way. <laughs> right, next one. Um, well, the next question is, do you play an instrument? But do you play any other instruments apart from the whistle, Gareth, and then the accordion, Martin? Uh, I play the concertina and the bar on. Yeah. Uh, not really. The melodion, I suppose, of that kind. But... Yeah, Eric does. We'll, just throw, uh... we'll give you two instruments there. We're all right. <laughs> um, what is your favourite local radio station? I'm on South Northern, sir. <laughs> Uh, Ocean FM. Jesus, it's a bit They're two local ones to me. I'm very happy with that. Um, <laughs> what's your favourite song to sing? Um, take it easy for the Eagles. Um, I'd probably say the same. This one we're working on there at the minute, a fair bit. And, oh, um, I suppose the yeah, fresh stuff, you just love that stuff. So. You brought a bit out on Facebook of that song, did you? Or am I raving? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw that all right. Um, what's your favorite venue to gig in? Uh, Germany. Germany. Anywhere in Germany. <laughs> uh, probably I would say the same. The Balva Cave in Germany is just a great atmosphere. 
I'm going to agree with you too because some of the best gigs I've done have been in Germany. Where you you were on tour, do you know what? We'll hold off until the end of the quiz and we'll go back to Germany. We'll we'll discuss that in a second. Um, who is your biggest fan? Sorry, what was that, Sandra? What's your who is your biggest fan? Oh, our biggest fan um, has to be my mother. Jesus, <laughs> uh, our biggest fan. I don't know, Marion Fitzgerald. Oh, <laughs> There we go. Marion's getting a shout out there. Yeah. Um, tell, oh, did I, oh yeah, I asked you the favourite venue to gig in. Um, tell us something we don't know about you personally or the, about the band. Um, I'm a mechanic. The thread. <laughs> uh, so, something about the band. Uh, Any band secrets we should know about? Just don't, Marty, don't, don't, don't let it out. Uh, <laughs> Oh, there's a, there's a couple of stories, Sandra. <laughs> there's actually, there's one very funny story. Go on, give have, it a to have, a, have a time to tell you. Yeah, go on, give it to us. Uh, there, was, there was a night we were doing a gig in uh, Gar's hometown there, Darlene, and uh, the van wasn't starting. So he, he, had to be, <laughs> he had to be pushed to start the van. So we went up the road and, and up to the house and out of the van, going, in, going into the house and, and the police followed him up the road thinking he was drunk. And he, Gareth didn't know who was, he flew in, the car flew into the house and he didn't know who it was. He thought it was someone coming to rob him. So he ran to the house and they pinned him to the wall. And then they let him go right now and they found out he was all right. But then they were doing a checkpoint down the road and they couldn't keep a straight face and they stopped us. That was a scary day, Dad. <laughs> Yes, it to the wall. Well, geez, I don't know what's different if they thought you were drunk. You must have been high as a kite. Oh, <laughs> I was as relieved to hear when he shouted, please. Remember, he shouted, please. I, I said, thank God. He said, thank God. And even when you know you're not in the wrong, you still panic. Oh, just no, I was as ever as happy to hear the police say to us. <laughs> I thought I was in for that day. <laughs> well, speaking of police, the night um the night that I was driving home from the gig <clears throat> yourselves, I would have I drove back where what way did I go at all? I can't even think now. I definitely drove back via oh geez, was I coming into Bundor and, and I got stopped at a checkpoint and I was like, Oh sugar. This is like this was definitely two AM and I was like, Well, the only excuse mm -hmm. I have is that I was technically working, but you know, I didn't need to be. So I got stopped and they said, oh, where are you going? I said, oh, I'm on my way home working or whatever. And then they looked, one of the guards, the other side started laughing. And I was like, what are they laughing at? The other guard shouts in and goes, are you from Mayo? And I went, I am, yeah. And they said, um, what's your name? And I said, Sandra Ganley. And they shouted across to the other guard and said, oh, Sandra Ganley. And they all started laughing. I didn't know why. I was a bit like, what the hell are they laughing at? So I said, am I good to go? And they said, yeah, yeah, away you go. Next minute, the phone bings. One of the guards on the other side knew me, but didn't say, he didn't make himself known to me, knew me and texted me and said, oh, I saw you there, that was yourself. Got to, <laughs> I didn't know why they were laughing though. I felt really like yes. uptight or something. Because technically I shouldn't yeah. have been on the road. But anyway, I had to go and work with the tumbling paddies. It was essential travel. <laughs> that is essential, that's essential. That's essential true. travel. <laughs> I think I've all the questions asked. So you survived the quick fire round, but I think I had caught you on the hop once or twice there. You did, surely. Yeah. So it now let's, let's go back and discuss Germany. Um, so what was the crack with Germany? Was it a once-off gig or were you on tour? Or how did that work out, Gareth? We done, uh, we've done how many gigs? Two in Germany, I think, at the stage. No, we got asked out by um, Sean Reeves. His name is, he does do all the, he's like a promoter out there. And he asked us out to an Irish festival out there. And there was bands, uh, Brischa, they were out. And then there was another band from Denmark, I think they were, they were called Almost yeah. Irish. They were great. And uh, they were from Denmark, but had very, very strong Monaghan accents. <laughs> it, was, it was a good one. <laughs> but, uh, they were, uh, but it was a great festival. It was, uh, what is it, 2,000 people packed into a cave. It was unreal. Yeah. Was it a bit claustrophobic? The... No, just, no, no. No, it was massive. It was, oh, it was a brutal like it was, it was far bigger than any marquee in Ireland. The stage was just crazy. Mm, big spot down. And a uh, question for you, you know how you'd be waiting backstage in the green room. Did you get the wine and the cheeses and the food and did they do that for you? The spread, the German spread before a gig. Oh my God, I don't know, did you get that service? Well, they put out some sort of sausages 
Wayland from the first time, Sandra. No date. McDonald's. McDonald's. The first time we went, we didn't eat at all. And the second time we made sure we got McDonald's at the airport. Okay, so you weren't impressed with the with the food. Oh god, no, no. no. Sausages no. without sausages. I mean the morning we woke up. But no, no, it was never we got there. There was, there was a wee old <laughs> there was a wee old woman and she was coming around with this tray with these sausages on her. Oh, they were spicy. Oh dear. <laughs> never again. Oh no, that no. Was, so you wouldn't be cut out for a five-week tour like I do, so. No. Oh, no. I don't need the lunchbox. I done a five-week tour with um, oh sugar. Um, oh, I can't remember the lads. Jesus. Um, oh, isn't it awful? I can't remember the name of the lads. I'm going to Google it in a second. But we, um, <laughs> we every time we went to a venue, we had a venue every day. I think we had one day off, and um, we had every day we went into the venue there would be white and white and red wine first any amount of bottles there would be the full cheese mm-hmm. platter the full meat platter they would have um like food ev- anything and everything every day so essentially we're mm-hmm. having a few drinks before you went on stage now for a musician <laughs> that's all good and well for a dancer yeah. not so much um yeah. but anyway box and banjo <laughs> i had to look there box and banjo that's who i was after oh, there. oh yes yeah but uh, oh yeah no Germans just love Irish music and trad and just they really get they nearly get into it more than more than the Irish like it's, it's, yeah. yeah yeah it's deadly yeah and um, did you do the meet and greet after or, or oh, we that... did oh we they were signing, signing autographs but Jesus <laughs> they love it it's it's no German I think it's always and a lot of Irish bands do go out to Germany now more so the trad I, a country trad yeah. makes fair enough I don't know too many country artists go out but there's definitely a, there's definitely a, a good connection there with the Irish and the, and the Germans well I'm marrying a German so they'd want to be um, but anyway <laughs> um, yeah so that's the best gig so in a cave somewhere in Germany exactly yeah, yeah. Bad, sounds a bit dodgy yeah. but we'll let you off or oh, no <laughs> um, so what else did you get up to oh you done a collaboration with uh, the very well known Derek Ryan we did we done uh, a song called On the Sash with him back in when was it now Jeez, I'm working for my dates it was July was it July June July what, what, 19 2019 I don't know. it was actually May 24th that we done the, the video for it very good. So you were definitely on the set. So you weren't just fake. Well, we were. <laughs> wow. So that's two. That's going to be two years now, June. That's absolutely nuts. Mm-hmm. Or July. Sad, isn't it? And yeah. how did that come about? Uh, Derek wrote to me on Instagram one evening, and uh, he had heard about us, and he wanted to see us. So then we started kind of back and forth, messaging and crack and. Then he came to us one night. He was playing in the Allingham and Bundoran, and we were up the road just in the chasing bull. And he came into us before his gig. And he looked at the electric scene, and of course, sure never seen him coming in. The nerves kicked in, and you know, straightened up, and you know yourself. <laughs> and uh, then I wrote to him the next day. Sure, I couldn't, I couldn't wait. You know, to hear what do you think? Text or what? What do you think? I said, like, I'd love to meet and chat. So that was all right. Went and met him on air for a drink. And uh, then he says, I have a song I'd like to do with you. And it was on the sesh. She kind of went from there. I love how you went and met for a drink. You know, the very official, formal interview. Oh, so to do it. Like there'd be no pipe, you know. <laughs> well, no better man to do a, a collaboration with because, of course, he would have had a similar background to yourselves. He would have done the fla. So we had the trad oh, yeah. part of things as well. So I suppose in that sense, he would have understand understood you a lot more and kind of, you know, we would have got had a feel for you already. So that that probably helped as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's great to work with him and have, you know, and he knows the crack and he's that experience in it. Like, Absolutely. Um, and I suppose that probably well between that collaboration and then your other your EP and all the brilliant songs on that. That's probably what has helped you get to fourteen thousand followers on Facebook. <laughs> Oh, it's did, you know, did you know that's how many he had? Well, as of an hour ago, that's no. how many he had. Jesus. No. Jesus. Do, you mean, I... do you remember the time we were trying to get to a thousand? <laughs> we're months getting to a thousand. Oh, it was, we started off slow. We were like an old T20 tractor. We couldn't get... We got, 
<laughs> that was a good way to get going. Well, you know, right, every, every so the first thousand G had a bit that was celebration station, was it? Uh, oh. God, uh, and now look, <laughs> and you probably know all fourteen thousand personally as well. We, oh, we would, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> some of us don't know the man. Well. We all know a few. Yeah, you have a few thousand each that you know. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> very good fair play to you. um yeah so of course well you have the facebook page there and you have the instagram page and you have the songs up on youtube so um if anyone does want to check you out sure you'll have another fourteen thousand uh, followers after this interview exactly I oh, yeah. it. <laughs> onwards you know. and upwards uh. <laughs> um no but you have yeah. you've been popping stuff up on the facebook page which is great and you threw up there we said was it the the eagles you threw up a cover there a few weeks ago was it it was, it was uh, just weeks of playing in that. That mm-hmm. was many weeks ago, was that? That's a month ago. It must be a month ago, month ago now, that, yeah. It would be. Um, but yeah. I think, yeah. no, like, you've been lucky in that you've had that on and, and the Today Show and that kind of thing, but I suppose you do have to be popping up some bobs all the time just to keep it, you know, to keep yourselves, well, to keep yourselves sane and keep yourselves busy, mm. but as well, I suppose, to keep the flow going and keep people commenting and, and in touch with you. Well, that's it. Yeah, we were very quiet there for like a month, you know, we kind of took a break. Just, you know, the whole yeah. thing, like... But you had to go home and there. learn Maggie in the Woods, like, at some stage, so... Well, that's it, yeah, you have to... That's it. You have to remind <laughs> yourself how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so you've... Yeah, no, it's great to see... And you popping up them bits on Facebook, it keeps keeps the fans going and it keeps a bit of momentum going as well um and have you um, look I, I don't need to ask have you any dates in the diary i'm sure you do but it's just when and have you any major plans really i know an album maybe please god soon enough um but other than that i suppose it's wait and see is it martin um yeah i think so we've um i suppose very hard on the gig front like andy's been taking gigs there but like you're cancelling gigs and you're switching gigs and so nobody knows where they are really with gigs. Like the dairy, there's a pile of gigs in the dairy, but sure how many of them gigs we're going to do, we probably don't know. But we have a couple of things. Uh, we've actually a gig. We're supposed to do a gig in England, in Manchester. And it's been put forward all the time, but it's one, um, I think it's actually a Friday and a Saturday night in Manchester. Um, I think it was Manchester Irish Festival or something it was called. At the time, Ooh, so it's been put forward, is that so. in February, March? <clears throat> I think it was. Yeah, we were supposed to do it. Yeah, we were supposed to do it just before the lockdown. Yes, we've actually. Been, I've done that time. festival. Um, yeah, I've done that festival actually. Um, it's yeah, it's very good. Um, was yeah. it in? You don't know the venue? Was it Charlton or? Oh God, I don't know. Remember. I know. Not look, I'm, sure. quizzing you, I'm quizzing you hardcore now, but <laughs> yeah, it's very. It's an excellent <laughs> festival. Actually, I've been involved with it before. Um, I done it. Yeah. Was it last year? I done it or the year before? I can't even remember. But I suppose will you have have you a better chance though of getting? You'll be able to do gigs in the north, will you? Before the south, I think you're going to be ahead of us a little um, bit. <laughs> probably will. Yeah. Um, I suppose over the years, the north we didn't actually. There's not that many venues in the north, really, compared to the south. We're not party animals up here like you use, I think. <laughs> but uh, we um, we actually love playing in the south. It's just a completely different atmosphere compared to the north. But um, I suppose at the minute it's probably looking the north is going to open up before the south. But we'll wait and see what happens. Just yeah, yeah. Please God, I tell you, I'll be on the road up to the north for all these gigs. <laughs> um, no, that I know. You know, I think yeah, the north is definitely ahead of us slightly with when gigs can start back. But I'd say you're so used to traveling down south anyway for flas and stuff. Well, I suppose Sligo would have been ideal for you and Derry, but I'm sure we've missed out. You probably went to Dundas. Do you, do you, have you got to go to the Flas in the last few years? Or were you busy with gigs or did you try and put we'd them always, on? We'd always book it off, so we would be always book the... Yeah. Do the you still compete? No. Well, I think no. John, John, has, John won the senior box there, so he doesn't compete anymore. Okay, so, so he, he see he was time. practicing Maggie in the woods, you see. He knows. He was. The, yeah. That's the tune That's the tune he played. <laughs> that was it. He, he won the box on Maggie and Oz. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so only John, no. he, he'd book it off. Fair play. That's the case. I'd be the same, though. I'd have it in the diary and no gigs oh, around yeah. then. Ah, oh, I still need which is. It's a Milton Malbe. I haven't got, I it was only there years ago and I was only there for the day. You do go for the week, do you? Oh, we take the whole week, got Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Willie Clancy Summer School, are you going a bit old for that now? 
Or just no, no we actually the drinking school is <laughs> we just cycle, we actually cycle down. Do you cycle you from Fermanagh down to town man Malbec. No, Tyrone. Uh -huh. What do you for from Tyrone oh. for charity? Stop. We do. We do. We do. Oh, actually, we do that. Every year. Every year. This last this last five years, I don't know. And tell me now where does all the instruments go? Well, Gareth, you're all right because <laughs> the, <van. laughs> the, <van. laughs> the van goes with us. Stop. And who does that? It's like the cold ourselves. Or what is it, sir? Um, oh, the Tony Paddies, the Whistling Donkeys, um, and the Knockmore Kelly Band. Stop it. And who no. goes? Because I think, was it yourselves? One of you had a. Was one, did one of you had a Knockmore Kelly Band hoodie on you the night I met you? Probably Marta. Because mm. oh, so, oh, I was the, the cycle, the, that was the cycle. Right. That was the cycle hoodie. The cycle hoodie. Because I was yeah. quizzing yeah about was it the Mug the Maguires in that band and yeah uh, Mar Mar Margaret. Yes, Margaret. I was, was quizzing Yes, yes, that was it. I was because uh, I was saying I would have gigged with them or done whatever with them. That was it. So that's yeah. the background of that cycle down. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah. if there's that gang you go and you definitely need a van for all the. Jesus, oh. for all the instruments. Jeez, that's great, crack. And what route do you go or where do you stop? Oh, down through the back yeah. roads. Down the, the back, back roads, roads kind of, I don't know. We go down through like um, in the Swan Roscommon the town. In, in Roscommon the town, we just stop in. Normally, isn't it? Uh, in the Swan the Bar, on right, and straight on. <laughs> straight on, Milton Malde. How long does it take? Uh, or does it depend on, uh, on the form? Uh, two days. Isn't it two days normally? Just two days. I mean, coming in the Carrick and Shannon <laughs> last year, me and McCann, act, we were so, we were so, our legs in us. <laughs> There's only about two hours in. And, uh, so the rest of the group are flying on. Me and John says, they're not going anywhere us. <laughs> we tipped in the Carrick and Shannon. <laughs> but an hour after the rest of them, no point panicking, you see. That's the thing, you have to pace yourself in the bike. That's it, you're running Carrick. You're still a good distance to go. Oh, it's it, it's Jesus, it. that's, that's like gas crack. Because when you first said that you go, <clears throat> you cycle at Milltown Malbe, I had a vision of you just cycling around the village, like <laughs> on the oh, bikes. Nice. Oh, no, 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 no. No, and what? The bikes are put away then. There's no more bikes then. They are tipped upside down. And, <laughs> and, left. and do you, you left. cycle back then as well? Oh, Jesus, no. I no. was going to say, oh. cycle oh. back from Milltown <laughs> are here. No, no, no. no. No, that would be a risky one. I don't know. You probably wouldn't even make it out of Clare, like. If you don't, no. you'd be done for drink driving. That's it. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> easy. I'll have to keep an eye on that. So, well, I don't know what would be happening this year, but please, God, next year. Jeez, that sounds like great crack. I'd have a water station set up for you somewhere. You should. Sure, it's a job. Please, you should perfect. do it, Sandra. Ha, ah. You, know. you can do it. No, I'd much provide, I'd much rather provide a water refreshment station, especially for the people lagging at the back, like John and Gareth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Poor old John's not good. John's not good in the bike. He'd be, gone, oh. he'd be on a downhill in the four skier from Bedlam Lake. The first gear from Dromore and Tyrone to Middleton will be the first year. He never changed gear. He hasn't figured out how to how to work oh, the gear. Well, it, it was like one of them wee hamsters on the wee ball or on the wee Ferris wheel thing on the key. Because <laughs> poor old John is getting off the slagging in this podcast, I tell you. Oh. They'll have to listen in now. You're going to have to quiz them on it just to see did they, did they listen into it or did they only listen for the first five minutes and say, ah, yeah, you sounded good. Uh, <laughs> we'll make them listen to it <laughs> so have you any other plans you can fill us in or is it all hush hush it's all hush hush oh, Jesus. Jesus. Away. So away we can it's definitely it. look forward to it so this would be great um, and, can, and can people buy uh, have you still hats for sale I know I was very lucky to get a hat off we do we do there's any amount of hats if you're cold <laughs> give us a shout <laughs> No, I have my hat. Um, I was I only wore it last week out on my walk, so I have my lovely bubble job. hat. So if anyone wants to purchase the hat, uh, get in touch with the lads. Message the Facebook or the Instagram. You have the Instagram there as well, so people can go follow you on Instagram mm -hmm. and the YouTube. And then I'm sure you all have your own little individual accounts, so you you can, you know, you can mm -hmm. go and check out the lads there yeah. if you have a favorite or if you've, you know. If Gareth, partner your favourites, go and follow them too. Um, and Mar or Gareth, you were saying you're a mechanic as well, so you're you're working away at that, are you? Or yeah, I'm a lorry mechanic, walking away at McCaffrey's quarry in the island. Lovely. And do, does all the band have jobs? Um, are they kind of working away at other stuff? Or Martin, are you working away? Or 
Yeah, we're all, I think we're all actually, I work in OMA in uh, Builders Merchants and Kieran works for BT and Lee, Lee's sort of studying and building houses, Lee's doing everything, baking buns and everything, Lee do anything. He's a jack of all uh, the Osh, Lee's just, <laughs> and then Oshin's, Oshin's studying and John's studying, Very but we're all kind of, we're all kept busy, so we are. Yeah, and are they studying music, or just out of curiosity, or are they going down a different route? I don't know. No, um, John, John's doing, John's doing business. <laughs> no, John's doing business and Oshin's doing uh, computers. Something with computers. So John is going to run the business side of the band and then and then, oh, and no. then John can work, or is it the other way around? John can work on the business side and then the other lad can be working on the website and the, that sort of stuff. We'll be bankrupt. Oh. Bankrupt. <laughs> John will be late for every meeting. <laughs> it's an awful man. Oh, your gas crack. Look, Jesus, two E was enough to handle anyway. If I had all six E in front of me, God, I don't know what we'd do. We'd all be talking over each other. So as much as it would have been lovely to have Lee and John and Kieran and Oshin on, I tell you, I wouldn't have been able to manage G. I probably would have just left the meeting and I would have let G keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> leave um, us but, to us. Yeah, leave you to us. Yeah, they, geez, then we'd get the secrets out. <laughs> yeah. oh lads it's been great to have you and you're the first band on the country chats podcast um and no it's been lovely to to see you again and have the chat so, last time i saw you we were all you know we were professional and we were working and you were you were singing and i was talking so we didn't have much chance to sit and have the chats but it's been great to find the chat to you properly and um if anyone wants to check you out you have the facebook the instagram youtube um and your own personal accounts is there anything i'm leaving out that's all that's spotify spotify oh spotify i was listening to your songs there while i was getting geared up well i did listen to you anyway because i tell you when i put on your songs it just put me in such good form um i just uh, the trad and the country mixed together i just i love it i just love it um so yeah make sure guys go and check out the lads the tomlin paddies uh on facebook instagram all that jazz spotify YouTube, they have 14,000 followers on Facebook, so we want to jack that up a good bit now. Come on, give them 28,000. We, we're going to aim high, you know. Um, but lads, yeah. mind yourselves, and thank you so much for uh, for coming on to the chat. It's been great fun. Thanks very much, Sandra. Thanks for having Thanks us, Sandra. Us. Thank you very much. Problem, and as of course, thank you to uh, your manager Andy Cox for uh, getting this organised and for uh, sorting out the lads. Sorting out the, you must be the two chattiest ones, are you? Oh Jesus, no. No. Oh, if you got if you got Lee there, I'm not even. Uh, okay, so it's a good job. I I oh, you were chat. kind of middle of the road. You'd be here for an hour and forty minutes. You'd be here for Sandra oh, with Lee. Jesus, we might have to do a part two of with the tumbling paddies. Get the other lads on, and a part three. Then Jesus, you know what? That could be a good idea. Every few months, we'll have a different two on. Get okay. a different. We can knock three episodes out of you, maybe. There's yeah. my ear. <laughs> We'll have to see what happens. But anyway, oh, um, to all the listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Country Chats podcast. I really appreciate all the support so far. Uh, send in any messages or requests of singers that you do want me to include um, on the show. And um, yeah, just thank you so much for the support. Thanks to Gareth and Martin from the Dublin Paddies for coming on to today's episode. We'll chat to you soon. Stay safe. Slán. <laughs>